We've all seen it on the covers of magazines and the footage of nature documentaries. Stunning images of the landscapes from which Iceland takes its name. But these glaciers are more fragile than they may seem. And they have a story fit for a storyteller. There was an immense crack. The ensuing earthquake was greater than any experienced since man first walked the planet. My name is Andre Magnusson. I'm a writer. I live in Iceland. I have written children's books, poetry, plays, science fiction and non-fiction. We are in uh, an example of what has to happen to all coal-fired power stations in the world. And uh, I'm a part of a group who uh, make like a creative place out of it. And what's your connection to glaciers? So my connection to glaciers is more through my grandparents. My grandparents were uh, founding partners of the Icelandic Glacial Research Society and they went on a glacial honeymoon in 1956 for three weeks and they were stuck in the tent in a blizzard and uh, I asked them when I was a child, weren't you cold? And they said, cold, we were just married. And I was like, I didn't understand how you get warm when you get married. But I found out later. This has been kind of family mythology, our, our brave grandmother kind of a pioneering woman on the glacier. But if I had written 20 years ago that glaciers will, would melt in a lifetime of a single human being, that would have been sci-fi at the time. While now it's, it's not sci-fi anymore, it's just sci, science. Hi. Andre. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, I'm Kat. <laughs> Welcome. So, to my power station. Well, thanks. <laughs> it's not every day I get invited to a power no. station. So, so these are your grandparents. Uh, this is my grandparents. This is Iceland's highest peak. This is 2,119 meters. And uh, Grandma's not even wearing a coat, is she? No, it's good weather there. So I slightly interrupted you. Can I help you hang these up? Yeah, please help me. <laughs> so I'm kind of choosing what photos oh, wow, I would awesome. like to use in my book. I'll pop this one up here. Andre, how does looking at these photos make you feel? Well, they've always made me feel, uh, you know, nostalgic, proud. But there's also a, a slight section of time. That is, this is the first generation that was able to enjoy glaciers. Mm -hmm. And we only have three generations that will live that period. So then the glaciers will go. And after 300 years, these photos will be totally alien to that generation, especially in Iceland, when the ice has left, left Iceland. When the ice has left Iceland. Yeah. Andre wanted to take me somewhere to show me just how quickly the landscape is changing. About 10% of Iceland is covered in glaciers, but glaciologists now believe that all of Iceland's glaciers will be gone in just 200 years. We meet a guide to help navigate us on a long walk high up into the clouds. Here are the colours replacing the flowers. Here are the bulbs replacing the stars. Here are the brands replacing the species. Here are the freezers replacing the glaciers. This is the eye of the storm. The reason for everything is right here in my cart. So Audrey, tell me about where we're standing right now. Now we're standing by this memorial plaque that is where Oak Glacier used to stand. So 50 meters above us mm -hmm. should have been an ice sheet that was here 30 years ago but has now completely vanished and we only have like these remains of dead ice around us. Five years ago, when Ock Glacier was no longer heavy enough to lift itself up and move, it was declared dead. 
the amount of ice here has decreased dramatically. Researchers from Rice University in America recently drew attention to the loss. They approached André to write the inscription for the plaque commemorating the dead glacier. It's a strange situation because how do you memorize the sky or something? It's like something, <laughs> something big, firm, eternal, and it points in, in two directions. It points from here to the future, and then it points from the future back to us. Will you read me what you wrote? Yes. So here it says, a letter to the future. Ok is the first Icelandic glacier to lose its status as a glacier. In the next 200 years, all our glaciers are expected to follow the same path. This monument is to acknowledge that we know what is happening and what needs to be done. Only you know if we did it. August 2019, 415 parts per million of CO2. That's the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and actually the cause of the melting glacier. And that is rising about two to three ppm every year. But still, hundreds of glaciers remain here. I left Andre and went with my guide to Salheimer Jökull Glacier, the icy tongue of Iceland's fourth largest glacier, which covers nearly 600 kilometers square. It's also suffering under global warming. Leifer runs carbon neutral tours here. Do you think it's necessarily a good thing to encourage tourists to come to places where it might be their last chance to see it. And that's just not just here, but anywhere around the world. Isn't that just making a bad situation even worse? Uh, I think you can always question to fly and to travel. But if you do, either if it is to Spain or if it is to Iceland, mm -hmm. then at least I think it's good that people are educated about nature, about the glacier behavior, and how global warming is affecting the glaciers. But step down from the glacier to its lagoon and here you can find a whole new perspective. You can actually see how quickly the ice is melting. Look at all the water just dripping down into the lake. While a certain amount of meltwater each year is normal, it's the rate of loss at glaciers like this that's unsustainable. So Leif, how deep is this? Just closer to the glacier, it's about 60 meters deep. Has it changed much in the time that you've been coming here? Oh yes, enormously. The lake this didn't exist. It's just recent, it's just 10 years old. This lake is 10 years old? Yes. Then it was just starting to form, like in 2007, as a tiny pool. And then now the glacier is melting like back like a 100 meters per year. First, I found it really interesting and to, to be here in a living in a land where, where you can see the changes. But uh, then it's when you when you see it in this scale, it's frightening and it's yeah. a little bit sad. And I have a gift for you. What's the gift? Treasure's gift. <laughs> A rare diamond. <laughs> rare diamond. <laughs> yeah. And inside there is a trapped air that have been there for hundreds of years. That is incredible. It is so clear, isn't it? It's crazy. The ice may be beautiful, but it's a stark reminder that unless something changes soon, Seeing and experiencing Iceland's iconic glaciers is a privilege that few further generations will have the chance to enjoy.